What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and guess what? Another gimbal review. So I reviewed the Moza Air version one last year and I actually genuinely really love that gimbal. And this gimbal, they've really stepped up a notch. This gimbal is quite a bit stronger, a little bit more powerful, build quality is better. And there's quite a bit more features on this gimbal that the other gimbal did not have. So I had a chance to use the Moza Air 2 on like a dance scene for a promo for a conference and I was using the Sony a7 III on that gimbal, so let's check out that footage. We're gonna jump right into the footage. So getting right into the overall build quality, this gimbal is kind of a hybrid of aluminum and metal and plastic. That's built really well. It takes four batteries and the battery life can last up to 16 hours, which is crazy. Uh, the gimbal itself is only around 3.5 pounds and can actually handle a payload of 9.2 pounds. So you can put some pretty heavy cameras on this thing. Right now I have the 5D Mark IV, which isn't obviously that heavy but you can see it handles it no problem. Clearly there's no denying that they've kind of modeled this gimbal after the Ronin S. The handle's pretty much exactly the same, uh, the trigger and the focus knob and stuff like that. Uh, the only difference is this gimbal has a few more features that the Ronin S doesn't have, and this gimbal's quite a bit lighter. There's a quarter 20 mount on the bottom of the gimbal, so you can actually mount it to tripods or the mini tripod that it comes with. And up on the handle, they've added a nice little OLED screen where you can adjust all the settings in the menu, so you don't even have to go into the app, you can just basically change all the settings on the fly right inside the gimbal here. And you have all the regular options on most gimbals like the joystick to change the pitch and the roll, as well as the trigger on the front here. So turning the gimbal on is really easy. It boots quick, just holding the power button down. The cool thing is you can auto calibrate it by holding down the function button and it'll adjust the settings for the motors right off the bat. Also going on underslung mode is kind of weird. You have to turn it off and start it up to bring it around. But once you've done it, you can run it in underslung mode, no problem. One other thing that's really cool about this is that inception mode is a double click to the function button, but something I've never seen before is being able to adjust the speed with the wheel and also rotating it back the other way. One of the big features of this gimbal that I really love that I've never used on any gimbal is being able to change the speed right from the wheel. So if you want to slow down the sensitivity so you can get like a really nice smooth panning, you can adjust it to a lower number. And then if you want to speed things up, you can crank it up here and then it'll be really sensitive. So if you want to track like a car or sports or something like that, you can actually do that right on the fly. I also love how you can customize the front trigger here to change different modes and things like that. Uh, right now I have it in pan follow mode, but what you can actually do is go into the menu and set the front trigger to do follow mode so you can actually get it to tilt as well as pan. You can also get it to do a full lock as well. That's basically all the main features. Uh, there are a few more things I think that are pretty cool about this gimbal. Uh, using the USB cable, you can actually change all the settings on the camera from the actual gimbal and trigger record, a lot like the Zhiyun gimbals. And you can also do motion time lapses with this gimbal as well. Uh, if you wanna hook up the app, you can plug that in and you can basically adjust parameters. You can do different points through the motion time lapse. So if you want it to pan up, or pan down throughout the time lapse, you can actually do that as well. I was also notified that they just came out with new firmware that allows you to actually control the Nikon Z cameras, Z cameras here in Canada. So you can actually uh, plug in the USB cable and control all the settings from this gimbal as well on those cameras. So I just wanna make sure that I can mention that because I don't have that camera, so I can't really show you, but apparently you can do that now. I think that's it, this is an awesome gimbal. Uh, I love that it's very similar to the Ronin S, but it's lighter and actually has more features. And again, it's lighter because it's around 3.5 pounds. There's only really one real con that I have about this gimbal and that's the quick release plate. It is similar to a Manfrotto style tripod plate. Uh, you can use it on a Manfrotto tripod if you wanna take this off, but you can't use a Manfrotto base plate and put it on here. For some reason there's weird locks or something like that. And there's also dual locks on this, which is also kind of annoying. Uh, I don't know why they went with that setup, but that's what they have on here. And one last thing is this does not come with a carrying case. So that's kind of annoying if you have all the parts, you kind of just throw them into a bag, but they do sell a hard case for $129 and I'd really recommend getting something like that for this gimbal. I think they really knocked it out of the park with the price to performance. This gimbal comes in at around $599. So 
It's about 150 bucks cheaper than the Ronin S. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really good contender if you're looking at either of these two gimbals. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. I wish I was spun out of the scene. <laughs>